Welcome. I'm Dr. Rex Gatto, president of Gatto & Associates, and today we're going to visit with Dr. Donald McAleer. He is with North Shore Neuroscience, and he's going to tell us a little bit about North Shore Neuroscience. I met Donald a number of years ago at the Pennsylvania Psychological Association and he and I have been colleagues probably for the last 20 years. Uh, over that course of 20 years we've really seen many changes within psychology and I thought today we might talk about some of the changes within psychology. So Donald Good to see you Rex. Welcome. Pl pleasure to be here in Pittsburgh. Thank you very much. So first and foremost I would like to hear from you, and then I'll comment. Of course, I want to hear your brilliant statements. What do you see as some of the changes over the last 20 years in psychology? Uh, I, I really like your, your point here, Rex, because uh, uh, there has been, in my opinion, an, an awful lot of change. Yeah, it sure has. Uh, the, uh, the, the old tradition when you and I uh, were in training uh, was to uh, uh, go through, get your, get your degree, and then from then on you spend uh, approximately six and a half hours a day in your office with one-to-one -one individual counseling with people uh, with, uh, that have a variety of mental health problems ranging from depression to anxiety to panic disorders, uh, sleeplessness and so forth. Learning disabilities. Things have sure changed yeah. over the years. Uh, psychology, I'm pleased to say and, and very proud to say as well, uh, has really expanded uh, to the point now where uh, we're involved in an awful lot of things. Uh, business consulting, which is uh, what you do, uh, medical psychology, uh, uh, neuropsychology, health psychology, sports psychology, uh, uh, school psychology is also continues to have a very strong strong tradition. Forensic psychology a lot in the mm -hmm. area of, mm -hmm. uh, of the court and mm -hmm. uh, we've even had um, areas within the, the court for uh, quick if you will uh, adjudication mm -hmm. and a lot of that has mm -hmm. to do in areas of psychology support for people uh, with wraparound services mm -hmm. and so on, but well, we sure have seen a lot of changes. Yeah, and one of the one of the partners in our practice is actually a uh, court-appointed uh, um, uh, um, mediator uh, in uh, child custody uh, disputes. So uh, really, a, a, a quite a variety of things, uh, uh, and and I'm I'm particularly excited about uh, the interface between psychology and general health. Uh, you know, you you take illnesses. Let's take diabetes for mm -hmm. an example. Uh, there's a lot of psychology that goes into that uh, uh, in helping people to manage their diabetes effectively. Um, a lot of the problems we run into are compliance um, uh, with uh, ideas that people have that, well, I have this, but I can, I can sneak one or two uh, extra uh, uh, sweets or treats here or there, or I may not have to take my blood sugars on a regular basis. All, of course, can lead to significant problems sure. if, if it uh, gets carried away. And psychologists are often involved then in working with the, the diabetics uh, to help manage their regimens a lot more effectively. We also see psychologists in some states who have the right to prescribe medications. Mm -hmm. They go back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about a two-year course, a little less, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they are prescribing medications. That is medication in relationship to mental illness, but nevertheless, they are prescribing medications. We also see that in the military, mm -hmm. where a lot of psychologists, mental health professional, is prescribing medications to, to help support the therapeutic approach that we've all been in trained to, to utilize. One of the things you hear the prescribing psychologists talk about is that uh, uh, the right to prescribe is the right to also unprescribe. Right. And uh, very often um, <clears throat> we find that medications may be overused uh, when in fact we have very, very effective behavioral methods for uh, helping people to uh, control the, the, the issues with their moods and, and behavior. Uh, right now we do have two states, uh, Louisiana uh, and New Mexico, where people are able to, uh, mm -hmm. psychologists are, are able to prescribe, and a number of other states that have that as an initiative at this point. And as you did mention, the uh, Department of Defense uh, has prescribing psychologists, and some in, in, in working in the Indian services are also prescribing as well. Uh, going in a different bit, something that is new, and of course I've been involved in this 
since uh, 2000, so it's, it's a, almost a full decade. And that is the psychologically healthy workplace, mm -hmm. where we see now psychologists helping and supporting the workplace, and that primarily is the work that I do, to help people to have a psychologically healthy environment a psychologically healthy workplace that is lessening stress. We can't ever eradicate it, but at least controlling stress and understanding the concepts of leadership and communication, mm -hmm. work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And and those are, are key areas that psychologists, many psychologists, have really been involved in for a number of years. And, and as you know, Rex, when you actually uh, do the, the studies and ask people the questions, uh, it's not really their salary that Right. That excites people about right. their job. It's feeling that they're valued and that they're an active participant in the work that they're doing. Um, that's what keeps people right. coming back and that's what makes for happy employees. That sense of fulfillment, sense of achievement, challenge of the job, creativity, motivation mm -hmm. are, are actually ahead of the money itself. Mm -hmm. Because all of us, truth be told, no matter how much we make, and we learn this from our athletes, mm -hmm. no matter how much you make, you could always want more. Sure. So to really push people towards that area of motivation and putting out a strong mm -hmm. effort, it, it supersedes the money aspect. That doesn't mean that people will work for free, but it does mean that we, we see within the workplace, boy, the, the key drivers mm -hmm. challenge of the job and that sense of achievement.